It's an important uh, topic. Uh, let me just kind of set the record straight uh, for those who are not aware of this. Um, failure is not in the DNA of black Americans. Black Americans can think as well if given the same opportunity as any other American. For us to enter this conversation thinking that black Americans, because they're black, and because they had the slavery 200 years ago, are inherently less intelligent, is in, in indeed racist. Do not, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll kind of go back to a real quick point. Um, my dad was born in 1980, uh, 1928. Um, segregation was very, very strong in those days. His dad was uh, dropped out of, dropped out of uh, uh, second, second, third grade and went on to be a business owner. My dad, in 1950, got his PhD at Ohio State in agronomy and went on to, to make circles around men and women at that same time that were not his color because he was taught about meritocracy. That generation was taught that if you want to go out and win, you work harder, you study harder, you run harder, and you do not feel sorry for yourself if bad things do happen. You man up, woman up, grit, and get through it. Today, if that same success story would be to my dad, they would say he got through because of affirmative action, which is an insult to him and everybody else that before and after him. We have an issue, a problem right now, where black Americans, 75% in 2017 of black boys in the state of California could not pass standard reading and writing tests. Do you think they'll ever sit in this room succeeding? Do you think they'll ever go to college or whatever and succeed? No. Just recently, a couple days ago, Baltimore, 13 districts, zero proficiency in math. Now, affirmative action could get them to a college, but guess what's going to happen? They're going to fail. They're going to be upset. They're going to think the system's are against them because they've not been prepared. We're going to look at Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl uh, game this coming year. No one will ever talk about the fact that there's discrimination and meritocracy because they know the best, the best talent is on the field that day. Those guys who got on that field, whether they're black, white, it doesn't matter how tall or short they are, they're because they proved themselves to be the best prepared to win the game. We can do the same thing intellectually. Do not allow this country to go down that pathway of thinking because of our color, we can't think, we can't compete. It is very, very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Insulting. So I want to thank you guys for this conversation. This is very helpful. I, th I want to thank my colleagues uh, for America to have this process of thinking through this, what we're going through right now, for us to be in the, on, on the other side of affirmative action, which for 60 years has been a, 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 a detriment to too many, too many good people. We're now in the process of seeing how can we now make sure that we have a level playing field that our kids come out of the school system, they can compete, feel good about themselves, and when they get to that position of success, never feel they have to apologize because they were given a head start because of their color. I'm excited about this, this process and we're gonna, we're gonna find some solutions. I'd like to, again, thank our witnesses for taking the time to testify for the subcommittee today. And without objections and no further business, the subcommittee stands adjourned. Thank you so much.